Hello, dear friends, and peace to you from Mount Angel. I say peace to you today because I know that uh, the nation is discombobulated because of the election. Uh, lots of people are happy, lots of people are unhappy, lots of people don't know what has happened yet, or has it happened, and, and so forth. Everybody's confused, happy, mad, discombobulated, as I say. I don't have any special insight into all that. But I do want to say that it is okay not to spend all our waking hours inside the national mood following it. I mean, it's, it's worth our while also realizing that we can live our lives and should live our lives in a smaller circle uh, also going on with our daily lives, with the things we are meant to do, with the people that we are living with. And uh, if it should happen that we have some responsibility on a larger stage at some point, well, then we might do that with more calm and, and reason. You know, an example of that can be uh, last Saturday. Last Saturday was the day when uh, uh, Biden was declared the winner and the fights started uh, and we knew that that was going to go on. And on that day, I uh, was visiting with a family, friends of mine, a man and his wife and their 19-year-old son and their 16-year-old daughter. And there was, a, there was another monk with me and the young man, the 19-year-old, the he thought, well, you know, I got two monks here with me. I'm going to ask them what heaven will be like. And so we got started talking on that. And, and, and he uh, was quick to say, won't it be euphoria, he said to me. And, uh, and I thought about that a minute. And I said, well, yes, perhaps, but euphoria for a reason. In other words, it's not heaven isn't just going to be some for some reason God just makes us un, unbelievably happy. No, euphoria of heaven, if that's what we'll call it, for a reason would be because I think heaven will be full of wonderful understanding. Understanding of the mystery of God, first of all, and who God is, but also a kind of understanding of the meaning of our lives, the meaning of human existence. What have our lives meant? What does human existence mean? What does the created world mean? And to see that and, and God together with that, that would, that would be a kind of euphoria with a reason. And then the husband said, but will my wife be with me? I can't imagine heaven without her. And, and then the ideas were flowing in all kinds of directions. Everybody started saying what they want it to be, what they want it to be. And that was, it's fun. Except I said at some point, you know what, everybody? We also ought to uh, let God um, be the main designer of our heaven. Because God himself is ever so much more imaginative than we will ever be about things that will make us happy and for our good. I like to think of what St. Augustine said heaven would be and the city of God. He says it will be enjoyment of God and of one another in God. St. Gregory of Nyssa said that heaven will also involve an eternal progress progress in, in loving one another and God more deeply, in understanding God more and more deeply, and like it's never going to exhaust itself. Well, these, these are beautiful thoughts, enjoyment of God and of one another and God. And talking like this with friends, while the nation is discombobulated, and we may well be too, well, this isn't putting your head in the sand, talking about heaven, uh, because thinking about heaven has its impact here and now on the way we live our lives. 
I think some of you know that my abbatial model is seek things above. It, from, it comes from chapter 3, uh, first verse in the letter to the Colossians. But there's a longer phrase there. St. Paul says, because you have been raised up with Christ, seek things above. St. Paul is reminding us as Christians, something has already been done to us and for us. We are already living a risen life with Christ. And so seek things above. And then that's full of practical consequences. He says, therefore, stop lying to one another. You have put aside all anger, quick temper, the malice, insults, full foul language. Instead, what you have done is put aside your old self with its past deeds and put on a new person, Christ. So this is what I want to say. If we are at a troubled time in our nation, fine. It's serious business. But we can occupy a different place that will affect with calm and wisdom the the discombobulated nation. Uh, I wish you that. I wish you peace and joy with your friends and a longing for heaven, a longing for heaven that gives you hope in the here and now. God is incredibly imaginative. And as St. Paul says of him in the first letter to the Corinthians, echoing uh, an Isaiah text, uh, it has not even entered the human mind what God has prepared for those who love him. Eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it ever entered the human mind what God has prepared for those who love him.